Hello. This voice will be entirely familiar to many of you, and undoubtedly you'll be pleased to hear it. Thank you for joining me on my existing channel. Before I explain to you what has been happening, it would be useful to give you a little potted history of why we find ourselves where we do. Many years ago, utilising my unrivaled knowledge about myself and my kind, I started to write, just for myself, about narcissism and psychopathy. I made notes about those that I've observed in my family, those that I've dealt with socially, those that I've dealt with in a sexual liaison, those that I've dealt with in my various professional, business and otherwise capacities, making notes upon the behaviours, the actions, the various dynamics, making notes about the victims of our kind, the different types, and specifically with regard to the empaths. I started to build up a considerable amount of material, just for my own interest and knowledge. And then, nearly seven years ago, I started the blog, Knowing the Narcissist, and with a series of articles began to transfer some of the information that I had already accumulated alongside writing a number of books and allowing people to purchase those from Amazon. Books such as Fuel, 50 Things You Should Not Do With a Narcissist, Escape, No Contact, Confessions of a Narcissist, Further Confessions of a Narcissist, More Confessions of a Narcissist, Decipher, Ask, Ask Too, Fury, and many others besides. And thus, way back in 2015, I commenced the blog, along with writing those various books. And then, at the beginning of 2016, I decided to create a YouTube channel, which is this one that you're listening to me on. But I only created a couple of videos, and then was distracted, or rather, had my attention focused on other matters. I then returned to the channel, roughly in November 2016, and started to create more of the videos, many of those that you'll see that are already here. During 2016 and 2017 and 2018, I was doing a lot of travelling, and therefore the recordings are perhaps not of the best quality, as I was having to do them through a laptop. I would update the YouTube channel intermittently, not spending a huge amount of time on it as I was focused on professional matters. By this stage, I was dealing with consultations for people. I was dealing also with the blog and its moderation, a Facebook uh, page and Twitter platform also, and also then Instagram in 2017, but primarily focusing on the blog and the provision of consultations. I would dip in and out of YouTube, perhaps not doing anything for a number of months, and then having a splurge and then not doing anything and so forth. This continued on and off until approximately June 2019, or 2019 rather, when, for reasons which were never explained to me, that platform became demonetized. I later learned that this was as a consequence of the use of static images, notwithstanding the excellent information being provided. I then decided to start an alternative channel, which was the Ultra channel, which was commenced in August 2019, but I didn't actually do anything with it because I was so busy with other matters until October 2020. And then that channel, as many of you know, gathered pace, drawing in more and more people, reaching over 135,000 subscribers until recent events. Over 3,000 videos were created, millions of views, with millions of people helped by the information that was provided therein, many millions of people entertained, by my sardonic observations about the infamous and the famous, explaining to people how narcissists behave, how narcissists function, how we interact with our victims. My emails and testimonials are full of the information and accolades from people whose lives have been saved, and I do not say that lightly, from people whose lives have been saved by my information. Regularly people write to me saying, were it not for your information, HG, I would no longer be here. I have saved lives and livelihoods. I have brought peace to people's lives by enabling them to understand what they're dealing with, to enable them to know the narcissist through my work. With this considerable body of work in the bugs, in videos, in the knowledge vault, and of course, through direct consultation in terms of narc detectors, empath detectors, and naturally audio consultations, many, many people have been assisted. Thus, many people became familiar with my work. There are some that do not like me, they're entitled to that view, 
There are many who would not want to meet me, but most recognize the value of the information that is provided to you all and recognize that not only is it world class in terms of the information that is provided, but the manner by which it is provided to you also. And thus this continued apace. Of course, out there, there were the envious, unaware, mid-range narcissists occasionally taking pot shots at your glorious narrator, occasionally putting me on a hit list to suggest that my work ought to be taken down. But nothing happened in that regard, and I continued to educate, inform, and entertain. Then, last week, as I was away dealing with professional matters, I received a notification to tell me that I'd received a number of copyright complaints about my work. As you know, I will utilize excerpts from elsewhere for the purpose of using real-life examples so that people understand more clearly what is going on. I undertake video analyses and had never had any difficulty with regard to copyright issues using those in the past, even, for instance, where there were substantial segments of that work that had been utilised. In some instances, for, for example, the Ellen DeGeneres interview, originally when it was uploaded, there was a copyright uh, restriction, but not a strike, placed upon it. I explained that it was for fair use and that it was used for educational purposes. I'd heard nothing more until I think some three months had gone by and clearly the other party couldn't be bothered to respond and therefore the restriction was lifted. However, on this occasion, the enforcement arm of Viacom CBS had somehow had their attention brought or perhaps I suspect more likely that they are there specifically looking on YouTube for copyright violations or alleged copyright violations of the people whose work they protect and therefore they had taken issue with my reading of Tom Bauer's Revenge. Naturally I had been reading excerpts of it in each video for the purpose of not only explaining what was going on comparing it against other evidence, against other theories that existed, but also, of course, explaining precisely what was going on vis-a-vis -vis Harry's wife's narcissism. The vast majority of the publication is about her, and therefore it was axiomatic to explain it through that prism of her narcissism. And those that you have listened know also that at appropriate points I halted in my analysis and then would explain a particular facet of narcissism in detail, for instance triangulation or the assertions of control. Nevertheless, this presented a problem. Because of the number of strikes that existed, it meant that the channel was threatened with termination in seven days. The way to resolve this is twofold. You're invited either to fight the copyright claim by way of what is known as a counter-notification, where essentially you either say it's a mistake or that you argue fair use. That was a route that was potentially open to me. However, in the circumstances, I viewed it as one where it would be better really to get to the heart of the matter and naturally assert control direct. Your, the other route that's available to you is to copy, is to contact rather the claimant the copyright claimant direct. You're given their email address, and that is what I did. I politely explained to the enforcement arm at CBS Viacom that this work was done to educate, that it was done on the basis of fair use, that it was done in order to help people understand, and that, of course, I was advocating that people go and purchase the publication for themselves, and was, in fact, enhancing the existing, existing work. They were reasonable in their response, and prompt also, it must be said, they recognised the interest that was taken in the work by both fan and critic, but pointed out that they did have an obligation to protect the copyright interests. Uh, they disputed that there was fair use, and we could have had a detailed argument about that. But that would have taken up time for both of us and money, and was not necessarily a viable way forward. Instead, we reached an agreement. Given that the general purpose of the videos had already been served, namely most people had already watched them, it seemed to me that it was appropriate in order to enable them to protect their copyright and for me to preserve my channel, that if the videos were removed, they would achieve what they wanted and I would be able to protect my channel. I therefore suggested that if I were to do that and confirm that they would not be uploaded again in the future, that, that would they agree to the removal of their copyright claim to remove the strikes? They readily did so. And thus, we very quickly reached an accord and agreement that suited both parties. And, in fairness to them, once I had executed this, 
they promptly contacted YouTube advising them that they no longer wish to maintain the copyright claims, that they wish to retract them, and therefore that the copyright strike should be removed. Viacom CBS complied, as I did, with their side of the bargain. We both did what we stated that we would do so. And therefore, as YouTube wants you to do, we resolved the dispute amongst ourselves using the very channel, namely Contact the Claimant Direct, that YouTube had put in place. We sorted it out ourselves. They got what weight they wanted, and therefore I was in a position to have the copyright strikes removed. The deadline was the 26th of August, and the enforcement arm of Viacom CBS wrote to YouTube promptly on the 25th of August, explaining, and I have placed a copy of that email on my blog so people can see precisely what was stated, whereby they accepted that it should be removed, and it was without prejudice, of course, to their other rights, but they wanted it removed, the copyright claim to be removed, and that the strikes be withdrawn, precisely what they agreed to do. And they sent that in. Two reminders were sent to YouTube, pointing out that there was an impending deadline with regard to the termination of the channel and inviting them to process this withdrawal. Nothing happened. The 26th of August arrived, and seeing as YouTube's based in California, one expected that at uh, essentially midnight their time, the channel would go, but it didn't. And one waited. And then eventually... It appeared to be t to be terminated somewhere around about midday Californian time or thereabouts. This was unfortunate to say the least. Both parties had done what we said we'd done. We resolved our dispute, and there it was. It was therefore for YouTube to recognise the dispute had been resolved and to remove the copyright strikes and thus prevent the channel being terminated. They didn't do so. They encourage both parties to use a process through their own channel, namely to contact the claimant and sort it out between ourselves, and we did so, and that CBS Viacom used the email address provided to them by YouTube to inform them that the dispute had been resolved, that the copyright claims were to be retracted, and that the copyright strike should be withdrawn as a matter of urgency. And yet, despite us doing precisely what YouTube has prescribed us to do, the channel was terminated. Whether this is quite simply that the number of claims that they're dealing with means that they were not able to process it in time, uh, by the time that the automated deadline came about, possibly. Is it that they saw it and ignored it? One doesn't know because, of course, YouTube never tells you anything. It might be the case that it's automatically become suspended and that they will then get around to seeing that the copyright matter was resolved and they may reinstate the channel. It might be that I'll have to go to alternative means to bring it about. But that is essentially what has happened. It has not been caused by Harry's wife. It has not been caused by Christopher Boozy. It hasn't been caused by the Sussex Squad. As far as I was aware, any attempts they have made to have the, my channel taken down failed because it was never attacked, or at least I was never advised, that it was attacked on the basis of community standards violation. Here, there was a copyright dispute. It was resolved, and it was resolved before the deadline but YouTube failed to take the requisite action to recognise that resolution before terminating the channel. It follows as a matter of common sense and logic, therefore, that the channel ought to be reinstated, and one waits to see if this will be done. Of course, YouTube maintains its usual silence, giving you no feedback as to where they are with the process and what one can expect, and therefore it may be necessary for me to escalate matters in due course, but we shall see. In the meantime, I am extremely grateful to all of you that have expressed your support for my work, that have also contacted YouTube, expressing your dismay at their behaviour, expressing your support for the work and how it's helped you out, and I would encourage you to continue to do the same. I would encourage you across any social media platform that you can come to, that you explain that this channel is here, my existing channel, which I am now using, pending the return of the Ultra channel, and that you direct as many people who enjoy my work and find it helpful, informative, and life-saving to come and subscribe here and be involved. For the time being, my videos will be uploaded here, including ones which are already in existence, but moreover, new ones that we have created, and of course that will include my observations about the recent clusterfuck involving Harry's wife's ridiculous Spotify arsewipe of an attempt of a podcast. 
There's plenty to comment on with regard to her, of course. But it is very important that this channel is not silenced, not only in terms of speaking the truth about matters, but also, fundamentally, ensuring that more and more people understand about narcissism. That is what this channel exists for. This is what the Ultra Channel existed for. This was, if you like, knowing the narcissist was the original channel, and it may well come to pass that this is now the channel moving forward, dependent on what happens to the Ultra Channel. So what I would like you all to do is ensure that as many people that you know about other people that talk about Harry's wife, for instance, Amber Heard, talk about narcissism, that you go there and then you inform them that those who, are, who enjoy my work, find it useful and helpful, need not feel cast adrift. I know already, for instance, that Trevor Colt has very kindly made mention of the attack upon me and has been supportive. Thank you for doing so, Trevor. And that many of you have been contacting other YouTube creators and explaining what has gone on so that people receive the truth about matter, the matters and that you're able to come here and continue to listen to my excellent unrivaled work. I know that there are others out there, for instance, Doug of Days But Not Confused and also TL Strangelove, who have been and will be putting up videos explaining what's been going on. And again, I am grateful for the support. And to all of you loyal Tudorites, that have expressed your aggravation, disgust and annoyance at the way that the channel has been treated, your continuing support and the fact that you are getting the message out there that we will not be unwavered in the face of such attempts to stymie the right information being provided to the world. More power to your fingers and your voices. And I, H.G. Chudra, are most appreciative of your efforts in that regard. I wanted to create this video as soon as I was feasibly able to do so, to express my thanks and gratitude, and also to provide you with an explanation as to what has been going on, so that you're not left in the dark, and to ensure that you realise that this channel, which has been running since 2016, which is actually the older of the two channels, which is a pre-existing channel, will be utilised for the provision of my existing videos, but also new work coming forward. You are also able to access my work at narcsite.com, N-A-R-C-S-I-T-E.com, in its written form and access to the various services in the menu bar. There is the Instagram page, Knowing the Narcissist the Ultra. There is my Twitter page. You are also able to find me on Rumble, so many of the existing videos can all be found there. In due course, I'll be uploading some of the existing videos which were retreads of existing work from this channel but formed with better sound equipment and a better recording so you have those the ones if you like talking purely about narcissism and then there will be all of the ones from the very series the ones about amber heard and of course harry's wife that will be provided along with of course new material thank you very much for your continued support please ensure that you tell as many people as possible about the existence of all my platforms and particularly this channel and Continue to petition YouTube to ensure that they realize that there is a vast body of people that recognize how useful my work is, how central it is to their sanity and safety, and that they recognize that the right thing to do is to follow their own procedures and reinstate the existing channel. We will, of course, keep a careful eye on that and those developments, but in the meanwhile, utilize this channel knowing the narcissist, to continue to receive your delicious dose of the chocolatey, velvety tones of your glorious narrator. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.